think people kind of change when you serve them and you, you show them, you demonstrate that you care. The, it makes a huge difference. And humility is kind of serving someone, whether that's in conversation, whether that's listening, considering them better. It's, it's actually, um, if you're giving them already the gift of your presence, it's caring about what's going on in their life. The boy I mentored in L.A. was named Oz. And Oz would, would rarely ever talk about anything. We would just go, and he always wanted to eat a burrito. So we'd go get a burrito. And sometimes we would shoot basketball. But, but we talked a little bit. So what I had to do was talk to his mom and kind of find out what was, what was Oz's story, what's going on in Oz's life. And one of these times, I remember asking him, uh, his mom saying, oh, he won, a, he won a ribbon in a track meet. He got second or something. And he really wants to show you his ribbon. And so I said, oh, that's great to know, because that really helped me kind of draw him out. But with boys, they're, they're again, especially young boys, they're not always very talkative. Some of them are, but most of them aren't. So Oz gets in the car, and he has his backpack. And, and I said, um, hey, Oz, how are you? I'm good. Oh, that's great, man. Um, you want to go get a burrito? Yeah. Now, now, Oz, I heard that you were in a track meet. Um, how did that go? Good. Well, that's great. Did, did, how did you do? I got second. Well, that's awesome. Uh, did you win anything? Yeah. What did you win? A ribbon. Well, that's cool. Um, where is your ribbon? It's, it's here in, uh, in my backpack. Well, can you show me your ribbon? Yes. You know, it's like 17 questions later, he finally showed me his ribbon, and I was about to, show me the ribbon, you know, it's like, <laughs> stinking ribbon, you know, but, but he really, he really wanted, wanted me to be proud of him, and, and wanted me to serve him, and not, uh, the, the opposite of that would be self-centeredness instead of other-centeredness, and, and be stuck on looking at my phone, or, or not caring about us, but to model and demonstrate humility and other-centeredness to model integrity, which is just basically the alignment of your words and your deeds. I told him once, he asked if we can go to Chuck E. Cheese and play video games, and I said we would in two weeks. Totally forgot I said that. And fortunately, when I picked him up, uh, his mom said, uh, um, Oz has been telling his friends all week about Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, he remembered perfectly what I said two weeks ago. And I meant it when I said it, but somehow I'd forgotten. So I was like, great, we're going to Chuck E. Cheese. So we went and, and did the ski ball and, and did that. Uh, integrity is the alignment of your word and deeds. And sincerity is just living honestly. And so these are three tools to kind of think about as we, as we step into these mentoring relationships and as we call people to, to mentor. These are kind of benchmarks. These are relational benchmarks of how to build trust in the life of a kid. Show up, and then you model, and then you get to speak into their life. And this is kind of the last part. You speak into their life with um, grace and truth, you know, Oz, and this is how I felt. I, I, when everybody, any, whenever anyone re, kind of corrected me, it felt like rejection. And so I remember I had a headmaster or coaches at school sometimes would get really mad at me and kind of, you know, say, you know, do this better. And, and it, just, it just froze up. Uh, the Bible says that, that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And it's this idea that we have to be truthful with kids, but also grace-filled, especially when a kid is defined by rejection you have to really lovingly correct them and, and be extra careful how you do that. And also, you speak, into the life, you speak into their life in a way that just says, I'm proud of you. And what that does for a kid, even if it's like a second grade track meet, it's you're building confidence into a kid and you're saying, hey, you can do this, I believe in you. A lot of these kids, that's, that's the counter opposite of the inadequacy, which says, I can't do this. When you say, when you say, I believe in you, you can do this, you're beginning to instill confidence in a kid that he's going to need or she's going to need to interview for a job and hold down a job and to try to go to college and do all these things. And so when you, if you tell a second grade kid, great job on your track meet, good job, way to go. It's just a track meet, kind of, but it's not. Like, it's their life. That's where they are. And so you're speaking into a kid's life and you're saying, I believe in you. I'm proud of you. It's amazing how many people that I meet, um, even older men, that tell me they never heard from their fathers that they were proud of them. You know, their fathers never said, I'm proud of you. 
and it even kind of haunts them in a way. I think mentors do these simple things well. They say, they show up and they say, I'm with you. They model Christ and his integrity, his sincerity, and his humility. And then they also speak in with grace and truth and they say, I believe in you, I'm proud of you. Thank you.